Look at that, we caught another one. Boom, two fish on the same waypoint. Point proved! When it comes to bass fishing, there seems to be one type of cover structure, whatever you want to call it, that holds more bass than all the others. And it's not docks, it's not rocks, and it's not trees. It's grass. This kind of grass. Underwater aquatic vegetation is by far the greatest habitat for growing big bass. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys how to use your topographic maps and your fish finders to locate offshore grass like this. That's probably holding bass nobody else is fishing for. My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Another giant, another giant. Look at that, y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! Well, how's it going, folks? And welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers and catch more fish. So if you're all about that, hit that subscribe button. Today's video is part three of a four-part series on offshore bass fishing here on the channel. And so if you missed episodes one and two, specifically episode one, stop this video right now, go to the video description and watch that because we're gonna talk about a whole lot of terms that you may not know the definitions to if you've never offshore fished. So you might be lost in this one if you haven't watched episode one so go do that first. This video is sponsored by Siren Marine, and we'll get to more about what they are here in a little bit. So in order to find where grass grows offshore, you've got to know where grass grows in general, and it grows in three main places, starting with on the bank behind me. On bodies of water that have aquatic vegetation or grass, as I'm going to call it the entirety of this video, most of the grass is going to be along the bank. So I'm talking in the pockets, on the main lake, anywhere you have a bank line, that is where the majority of your grass is going to be. And to find aquatic vegetation, you don't even need a fish finder. You just look with your eyes because oftentimes the grass is going to be emergent, which means some of it is coming out of the water or laying on top. That though is not the offshore grass, the offshore fishing we're talking about, that is onshore grass. Now the second category that starts to verge into the offshore category is the offshore grass, but it's connected or is close enough to be connected to the bank grass. So the easiest way to find this type of grass is to find shallow grass and then follow the water deeper, 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 deeper until you get to that five to 12 or 15 feet of water. That's gonna be your offshore grass that's connected to the bank. It could be connected to a point. It could be connected to uh, a peninsula. Really anything sticking out into the water can lead to offshore grass that is connected to the bank. In the third category of grass, and this is again the most offshore, is going to be offshore but disconnected from the bank. So this is not close to any point. It's not close to any grass edge, grass line, docks, pocket, whatever. It's out in the middle of your body of water, usually on humps or just any kind of underwater structure that is off the bank. And really the only way to find this type of grass offshore disconnected is going to be by using your maps and your fish finders, which we're gonna talk about. But just because this grass is disconnected from the bank doesn't mean that it's gonna be in any deeper of water. So let's talk about depth when it comes to offshore grass fishing. So I wanna take a quick second to talk about a really cool marine product I've been using in my boat this year, and it's the Siren Marine 3 Pro. This network of Bluetooth enabled sensors allows you to monitor your boat in real time and receive instant alerts on the status of your boat in the case of a critical emergency like a battery failure or an unauthorized entry. And the way the Siren system is able to do this is through 4 and 5G LTE coverage straight to an app on your phone. So if you have cell coverage, you can check on any status you want inside your boat from anywhere in the world. In my Skeeter Bass Boat, I've got wireless entry sensors here in the rod box and tackle box. I've got a high water sensor and and battery sensors. Everything is connected via the Siren 3 Pro. Gone are the days of worrying if my batteries are still charging when I leave my boat somewhere, and if somebody tries to steal things and break into my boat, the Siren Marine app will alert me. I'm gonna leave everything about Siren Marine in the video description below. I say we go back on the water and get to learning about offshore grass. Most offshore grass fishing takes place from five to 10 feet of water. I know, pretty shallow compared to most offshore fishing, but grass is a little bit different. Now, aquatic vegetation can can grow a lot deeper. I know of lakes that hydrilla grows in 25 plus feet of water, but that's not the majority of lakes and that's definitely not the majority of offshore grass fishing situations. So we're gonna talk about the majority in this video. Now, where the heck do you start? If you're looking at a topographic map like this one right here, how do you know where to start to look for offshore grass? And besides following the grass out from the bank, how do we find that offshore grass? Let's talk about my three main places I looked on the map before I turn the big engine on and start idling looking around. My number one place to look for offshore grass really stays consistent with all of my offshore fishing tips, and that is to look for points. So as we scroll around the map right here, I'm gonna look at two main points here on the lake in Minnesota that I'm at. 
This here is a point. See, oh, it says pier or jetty. That's a point, and then this right here is a point as well. Usually though, you can follow a point from where it is on land out into the water a good distance, and you'll be able to find offshore grass, at least until that grass stops growing. Here's another fantastic example of what a offshore grass point probably looks like. Again, I haven't graphed this yet, but this is what it looks like coming off the main point, and then look, extending out into the water all the way out to 10 feet, 15, and then the point kind of dissipates. That is a great example of a land point. But an underwater point that you can't quite see is one just around here. Now it is a lot shallower. I wouldn't necessarily call this an offshore point. But you can tell right here, there's actually a dip in the, uh, in the bank pond right there, but the point actually extends underwater. And if we zoom over here, this one here is kind of a land point, but it extends much farther into the water, under that water that your eyes can't see, but the map can. And right over here, that's an underwater point where the bank comes in, a point actually comes out. So there's a lot more points, especially when it comes to grass, than you're probably aware of on your bodies of water. The next place to locate offshore grass is going to be an edge. Now an edge is an incredibly versatile and far reaching term because there are grass edges or known as grass lines on almost every, I wouldn't even say every body of water. If it's got grass, you've got a stinking grass edge. So if I zoom out here, I know here in Minnesota, all these lakes have grass. And so there's gonna be a grass edge as I follow this bank in however deep the grass grows, maybe it grows out to 15, maybe it only grows out to 13 right here. And so as long as you've got grass, there's going to be an edge. Fish love to live on edges. I don't know the science behind it, just trust me. I would rather fish nine out of 10 times on the edge of the grass than in the open water deeper than the grass or shallower water where the grass is even thicker. Maybe 99% of the time, I'd rather be fishing the edge. Now grass edges on your sonar are almost never going to be distinct edges where it goes from grass to edge to no grass. Oftentimes it just starts to thin out, it scatters. It goes from a lot of grass to a little bit less grass. You just want to find whatever the edge is of the grass in your body of water. And really what offshore grass is all about is finding irregularities. Keep that term in your head throughout the rest of this video because just like bass fishing in general, bass love to sit on things that are different. They love differences, irregularities in the bottom composition. And so if you can find offshore grass and a little patch, a little section that is irregular, looks different, that's most likely where your fish are going to be. So now that we know where to start graphing, Let's turn the big engine on, start looking out there for this deep grass. So just like every other type of offshore fishing, I am running mapping on the top of my screen and side scan on the bottom. I prefer not to use down scan or traditional 2D sonar a whole lot. I'll explain one situation here in a second in which I do use those most of the time. This is the layout I have. Now, if you've got two graphs at the dash here, that's even better. You can have side scan on one, mapping on the other, and maybe even mapping and down scan. But I like to have, as you can see, I get a good clear image from just side scan and mapping. And the main reason for why I don't run down scan or traditional is because you're not gonna see many of the fish that you graph on side scan and grass. You're mostly looking, like I said, for irregularities. That way you can fish those areas to find out if the fish are in there. So this is my general mapping setup for grass. Now down scan and traditional sonar can be used to help you decide if the area you're fishing has good healthy grass or how thick or skinny or stringy that grass is. So here's an image of what grass looks like on down scan and here's an image of traditional 2d sonar so I do switch to those occasionally to see what kind of grass I'm dealing with and if it's really thick or really stringy but most of the time this is my setup now what you see on the screen here is what grass looks like on side scan with of course a little bit of that grass in the water column right underneath the boat I'm gonna scroll backwards here and take a screenshot so you guys can see that but this right here is what grass looks like on side scan. I kind of describe it as like a cloud per se. So you look left and right here on the left side, upper left side, you'll be able to tell this is where a grass edge is because you see an actual shadow. Really, you just wanna look for good cloudy looking areas that kind of appear to have a stringy look to them. Now, since I'm graphing relatively shallow, like I said, off offshore grass fishing is really not that deep of water, I'm gonna do two things to my graph. First, I'm gonna change my frequency that I have on my garment here from kind of like the 1000 degree Hertz range all the way down to, I think it's 480, yeah, 455 kilohertz. And the reason for that is because I've noticed that when you actually drop in the quality, 
it does hinder your distance, but it gives you better clarity at shorter distances. And that's perfectly okay because when you're grass fishing, you can't even shoot that far out anyways because you're pretty dang shallow. And so uh, 80 or 100 feet on either side of the boat isn't gonna do you any good because you'll have no clarity past 40. And so I like to have my distance on my side scan usually around 40 to 50 feet. That of course does cause you to have to graph back and forth down your spots a little bit more. But I think that is the best distance and kilohertz range for shallow grass fishing. I keep the contrast maybe a little bit lower than I do on rocky or more sandy bottom type places. Again, I don't want to blow the screen out, especially when I'm on a grass flat like this with tons of grass. I don't want the whole thing to be a white return. I want to find the best good isolated clumps of grass. And as you can tell right here, we just went over some grass in two little holes right there. Again, irregularities, got to look for them. And again, are you going to see bass on your graph on side scan? Usually no. Now you can find indicators that bass are there. So irregularities and around those irregularities, you're gonna see probably a few screenshots in this video of some bluegill on side scan. Individual bluegill beds and big old schools of bluegill. You can find bait fish in and around uh, offshore grass. Those are great indicators the bass are nearby. Now you may also find some bass on a hard spot, an opening near that grass. But most of the time, I'd say 90 to 95% of the time, you're not actually targeting individual fish or even small groups of fish on your side scan with offshore grass, you're just looking for fishy areas. So you're gonna hop on the front deck once you mark a few waypoints and actually fish around that area to find where those fish were. That is good looking stuff right there. So as you can see here on the map, we are in about you know 10 to 13 feet of water. It's actually a point that kind of comes out like this. And as you can see right here, we have a ton of grass on both sides, lots of patches left and right, but I'm gonna get on just side view here so y'all can see what we're dealing with. This is some very good inconsistent stuff. You Again, I can't stress this enough. When you're grass fishing offshore, you want to look for and mark waypoints around inconsistencies. And so as you can tell from all of this right here, there is tons of stuff that is just lots of grass. You might find stuff that looks like this on any of the offshore structures that I talked about, the points, the humps, the, the dips, the channels. And so I'm gonna make a few points here to show you guys what exactly I'm talking about. As you can tell here, we had zero grass. And as we started to drive over that point, we started to see some really good inconsistencies with some big holes and hard bottom in between those holes, which is just juicy stuff. Then we found ourselves entering into a very thick portion of the grass. This is probably not a place that I wanna mark. And then coming off of that section, we got into some really good stuff that I'm actually gonna mark some waypoints on. So I'm gonna mark a waypoint right here on this edge because I love that I see some bluegills right here. And I'm also gonna mark one right over here because I love that I'm seeing a nice defined edge with a hard spot with I think some bluegills in that area too, which means there's probably bass around. I'm also probably gonna mark one all the way over here on this far right side because I think this looks like a really good point of grass to hit. And now we have left that flat area. We are in 20 feet of water, which means there's no offshore grass right here. So I say we circle around, mark a few more waypoints and catch some fish. I just, I'm gonna say it again and I'm gonna keep stinking stressing it. You want to look for inconsistencies in the grass. That's where the fish are gonna be. No matter if you're fishing an offshore hump or a grass line, if you have a, a choice to fish a straight grass line or a little indentation or a little point in that grass line, that's where I spend the majority of my time. Here's an awesome example of that in practice. My good friend Tyler Woolcut down in Florida is the angler you see on your screen. Now in this Bassmaster video, he shows what a good, inconsistent, shallow grass area looks like on a grass flat down in Florida. This kind of stuff is exactly what you're looking for and what you should be dropping waypoints on if you're offshore grass fishing. So once you've graphed around enough areas, marked enough waypoints, it is time to spin the boat back around and fish those areas because trust me the fish are most likely there even if you can't see them on the graph. Now I haven't talked about baits so let's talk about which baits and lures are best for offshore grass fishing. Now if you don't know where the fish are exactly in the grassy area you just graphed you're going to want to start with some kind of moving bait like these right here reaction baits. My two favorite for offshore fishing are a lipless crankbait and the vibrating jig. Now the reason why if you're unsure where the fish are you start with a moving bait is because those fish can hide super easily. They can nestle themselves deep in that grass and just a few casts over that grassy area with a slower moving lure like a worm you can easily miss where those fish are and maybe 
there's no fish here. Well, guess what? You didn't make enough casts and you weren't efficient enough. So in order to cover more water and maybe find where an active school of fish are, to then slow down and throw a different lure to catch more fish, you gotta start with a moving bait. I love lipless crankbaits in the pre-spawn in the fall, and when it comes to like spawn, post-spawn summer, it's really hard to beat a vibrating jig. As always, I will have all this stuff linked in the video description for y'all to check out. I love the new mock bait slack jaw and the old trusty thunder cricket. Now I'm sure a few of you in your heads right now are curious as to why I'm recommending a treble hooked lure if you're fishing around grass, because this is sure as heck not a weedless application. Well, in my experience, fish love to chase a bait and react to it when the bait is ripped out of grass. So it actually kind of helps you to get your bait stuck or lodged just a little bit in that grass, then rip it or tug it out, and that's when a fish will react. Now also, you want to be fishing around healthy vegetation. I'm gonna show you two types of grass right now. This type of grass right here might look okay to you guys, but it is nowhere near the best that it could be. It's kind of brown. It of course has some greener sections, but it is not the healthiest grass. Fish can live in this, but they would much rather live in grass like this. This here is juicy, healthy, green, delicious coontail here in Minnesota. This is the two grasses side by side. And so by using lures like a lipless crankbait, sometimes your cast is gonna be messed up by the grass. You'll have to reel it in, strip the grass off, and make another cast, but it actually allows you to check your spot that you just graphed to find out if the grass is healthy. Because I'm just telling you guys, bass love healthy grass. They would much rather be in the healthy oxygen producing grass than the grass that is not healthy and not producing oxygen. So getting snagged in the grass sometimes is not actually a bad thing. Now if the grass is deeper and or you already know based on previous fishing days or just local knowledge, if you know where in the grass the fish are gonna be a kind of a general area or you find a really good scattered area, you may not even need to throw a, a vibrating jig, a, a moving bait of some kind, you can throw a worm. And I'm not saying you can't catch them on other things than a worm, you can. I've caught them on a jig, I've caught them on uh, any kind of slower moving baits, but a worm is my favorite. And I've got four main types that I throw for deeper offshore grass, starting with a swimming worm, or what I call an all-purpose worm. This worm right here is the Strike King Cutter Worm, and I absolutely love this thing because you can fish it in so many different ways. On a Texas rig with a bullet weight, I can fish it really deep. I can fish it really shallow. I can hop it across the bottom. I can swim it through the water column because of that tail that has a nice kicking action. If you are in deep summertime, it's really stinking hot out there, you're fishing maybe some deeper grass than even I'm gonna talk about in this video, 10, 12, 15 plus feet, a giant big worm is gonna be your best option. This here is the Rage Anaconda Worm, and it is a fantastic ribbon tail worm to fish around offshore grass. If you wanna see a video on how to fish big worms, a masterclass on the giant soft plastic worm, I made one that has, I think, like 90,000 views. I think a lot of people liked that video. I will leave it linked in the video description as well. So either a smaller worm, you know, your six to eight inch, or your eight inch plus, depending on the fish's mood and the depth you're in. Generally, smaller worm for shallower offshore grass, bigger worm for deeper. My third favorite worm for fishing offshore grass, and one that I actually catch a ton of fish here in the north on, is a drop shot, but generally a slightly larger drop shot that I'm throwing for like my finesse tactics. So usually my drop shot is a spinning rod only sort of deal, 15 pound braid to like a 10 or eight pound fluorocarbon leader. This thing is straight 15 pound fluorocarbon. I'm throwing this around definitely some thicker grass clumps. And oftentimes the drop shot works great because if those fish are sitting just above the grass, a worm like these two actually sinks a little bit too far deep into the grass. And if the fish are a foot or two above the grass, especially when the weight sinks down into the grass, your worm is sitting above right in their face, giving them the old wiggle. And sometimes fish cannot resist this thing. Worms are the best way to, once you find fish and, and know where they are in an offshore grassy location, to dissect and catch the most fish possible. And so now that you know what kind of grass to look for and what type of lures to throw around that grass, I say we get back out on the water and show you guys a few fish catches from some offshore grass that we marked waypoints on. Let's get out there. Got him. Got him. Let's go. We caught one. Didn't I tell you? Ah, hey, chill, chill. 
Oh, uh-oh. I got a stinking marker waypoint. point. That is one thing you've always got to do when you're grass fishing. We're in a big open flat right now. It is so easy to lose track of where you are fishing. And so as soon as I caught that fish or probably should have done it earlier, I marked a waypoint that way I can keep my boat here and make the identical cast because fish in grass way more than any other type of offshore structure, more than wood, more than rock, they will school up, I guess, Maybe not more than ledges, but they will definitely school up and marking a waypoint is sometimes the only way to really know exactly where you were. So hopefully we'll catch a few more. We'll see. Maybe not, because that's just how fishing goes. What's been your favorite part of this trip so far? Mine was probably working out with you. Oh gosh. Here we go. We're getting all sentimental over here. Talking about our favorite moments together. Spot lock. Look at that. We caught another one. Boom. Two fish on the same waypoint. Point proved. Got him. Little chunkers, man. Single scoop. Mark away point. Yep. Another one. Oh, ooh. Almost lost my childhood. I mean, not my childhood. My ability to have children. Y'all, I kid you not. I'm gonna take a video of this on my phone. Every single irregularity that I marked with a waypoint, we caught a fish on. So didn't catch one there. Caught one there, caught one there. She has one? Yeah. Oh yes, Hannah has one. Hannah's got one. Oh, and this, this camera's about to die. Oh no. Hannah's got one to finish out oh, the, oh my no. gosh. Holy cow, holy cow. Let me get that fish. Let me get that fish. Let me get him, let me get him, let me get him. Let me get him. Yes, oh, Hannah Marie. I did it. Look at that. That could be a new PB. You think? Maybe. I don't think so. Hannah's PB is 3.37 caught this week. At huh? least PB largey. She has a bigger smallie PB. And this fish here is 3.59. That's a new PB for my wife. Tell them about it. Um, it's fish. I don't know what you want me to say about it. But did you catch him offshore how Tyler taught you to? I did. Wow. So everyone should go subscribe to Tyler because he makes you catch fish. <sighs> And to be honest, y'all, I don't think I can get a better review than that right there. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Again, if you did, hit that subscribe button. And if you missed my previous two episodes in this series, I will leave them up here in this corner and this corner. The longer y'all stay on my channel, the better it does in the algorithm. So I'd appreciate it if y'all would watch those videos. We'll see you guys next time right here on TRF.